Hello and welcome to the Great Tank Sew Along. Today we are sewing the Green Style Staple Tank. And this staple tank is a wonderful layering type tank or everyday tank. I love it because it has the non racer back. So that means I can just wear it with a regular bra or I can wear it with a fun strappy bra if I want to show my bra. So I am going to, I just cut out all of my pieces and I just wanted to show you them cut out. And the most important part besides getting them on the grain line on cutting this tank out is marking which one is your back. So when you cut them on the fold, you'll wanna mark where you folded with your, and um, with the marker, I use a water soluble marker or chalk or uh, soap or whatever you use. But on your back piece, write a B because the front and back are so similar that if you don't, then there is a, a very big possibility that you'll get them mixed up and end up wearing it backwards. And they're, even though they're so similar, there is a difference and um, the fit will be different. So once you have those marked, you're also going to be cutting out your one um, neck binding on the fold or band. I, I'm doing binding on this one, but you can also do bands if you want the more coverage of the bands. And then you're also cutting out two um, of your arm binding for your arm side on the fold. So the first thing we're gonna do is put them right sides facing and we're gonna sew our shoulder seams and I'm gonna go ahead and also sew my side seams. So I'm gonna sew 3 eighths of an inch right here and then I'm gonna sew down my side seams. Try it on, see if you have any adjustments that you need to make, if there's an area that um, has more ease than you want um, or that you need to make. Um, take out some, go ahead and do that now. Um, and once we are done sewing our side seams and our shoulder seams, we are going to put on our binding. So let's head to the machine. Okay, now that we finished that, we're gonna get our neck binding piece. We're going to take the short ends and sew them together. we're going to quarter it and clip it to our neckline. Now we can turn our shirt right side out and I've already marked my center points um, from whenever I cut out my shirt. If you didn't do that then then go ahead and mark those now and you're gonna put your front and your back center together and once they're together you're just gonna walk your shirt um, or walk your neckline to see what's the center and my center is my shoulder seam. You can't always assume that it is in a top, so I always check, and mine is my shoulder seam. Okay, so now I can take my neck binding and I'm gonna do the same thing. This will be my halfway point, and then I'm gonna mark where the fold is right here. Okay, and now that I have that done, I'm going to take the right side of my binding, and I'm gonna start in the back, so this is the back. I look and find where my B is, and where your B is, you're going to put the seam where you connected your binding strip, and you're gonna put the right side of that against the wrong side of your tank, and you're not folding it like a band. You're just leaving it flat, so it's just the two against each other, and then you're gonna put a clip. Now, this is different than Sarah Connell's method. I'm gonna put a link for that for those of you who have a cover stitch. Um, or have a fabric that you're using that's thick, you're going to want to use her method. Her method um, is less layers. Um, the reason that I use this method is because I don't have a cover stitch, so I don't like the way it looks on the back um, on hers because you just have to trim it off, and I don't have the finishing of the underside of the cover stitch. Rather, I just have the zigzag for my twin needle. So this is the method you're going to want to follow if you're using your regular sewing machine to make this tank. And you can still use her method with a regular sewing machine. It's just not gonna have as clean of an inside. Um, so just be aware of that. So what I'm doing is marking those points so that I'm stretching my binding evenly. So you can see my binding is measures less than the top. So I'm gonna be stretching this to meet my, um, my neckline. So you don't wanna stretch your neckline any, only stretch this binding. So now let's head to the machine and put on our binding. We're gonna do this on our serger. Okay, I'm at my machine and I always, I like to sew with the binding facing me and I like to start, I actually will start in between two clips. So I'll just kind of stretch it and see what the in-between points are the, of those. 
and I'll put that under my presser foot. And I don't trim any off. So even though it's a 3 8 inch seam allowance, I go ahead and so my serge seam is a quarter of an inch and I just leave it at that. I guess that means I'm a rule breaker, but on bindings, I don't like to trim off. I'm just not as accurate. The only time I do is if it's greater than a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If it's a, a half an inch or 5 8 inch, I, I will trim. And I really never think they look as neat as they do if I just use the surged edge as the side of my seam. And that's just my opinion. You know, this isn't a hard tug. It's just a slight stretch. Okay, now you're gonna set your tank aside and grab your arm binding. Now remember the arm binding is not cut on the fold. I accidentally cut mine on the fold at first and then I just snipped it in half. So it shouldn't be nearly as long as your neck binding. So you're gonna take it and put the short ends right sides together just like we did on our neck. And then we're gonna sew. Now again, you can do this part on your sewing machine too if you wanna use the stretch stitch if you don't have a serger. Um, it will hold up just as great. Now that we have our two arm binding pieces, um, we're going to lay our tank out and we're going to quarter um, each of these. So we'll find a halfway point and then once we have our halfway point, then we will find what's halfway between um, those. So we're gonna do that on the binding as well as on the whole, the, arm, the whole of the arm itself. that I've marked on my quarter points, I'm going to do the same thing that I had done on my neck band, and I'm going to put the wrong side of my binding towards, I'm sorry, the right side of my binding towards the wrong side of my top. And I'm going to match the seam where I connected it to my underarm seam like this. Um, now, if you're doing Sarah Connell's method or the method that's in the pattern, um, you're going to be putting them right sides facing. And then if you do right sides facing, then you're wrapping around like this and then just trimming off extra. So you have a, a raw edge, um, and that is definitely a recommended method if you have a cover stitch or um, you're finishing that raw edge. Um, you can also do it and um, a knit won't fray, so you're not having to worry about that. I just don't think it's as clean of a looking um, finish. Okay, now that I have that clipped here, I'll go ahead and just go to the sewing machine. Okay, so I just wanted to make mention that we're starting on our underarm seam, but I also wanted to tell you to go the same direction on both armholes. So if you start at your underarm seam um, and go to the back on your first one, then on your second one, you're going to want to do the same thing. Um, I just noticed when I do that, that they look more evenly balanced for some reason um, and that you stretch evenly between your quarter points. Okay, so let's get to sewing. Okay, so we have our binding applied and you can um, just apply one and then top stitch it or you can do all of them at the same time and then top stitch them all at the same time, whichever is easier for you. And now that they're all on the wrong side, we're going to wrap them around to the right side. And to wrap them around, you're just gonna fold that edge over and then wrap it over the seam allowance. And just make sure, um, this one gives you more wiggle room because it is meant to be trimmed off when applying it to the back, but I find it the perfect amount. Um, just make sure that you're doing it evenly so that if you're, your hands will kind of get used to the same fold and just kind of eyeball it.
and I'm going to go around and I'm going to do this on all my armholes. Lots of, lots of clips or pins. Okay, so I'm at my machine now and I have my um, my extra spool up right here and I put, I just wound a bobbin with the same thread as my main and I'm gonna thread them individually. So I'll grab this one first and I'm going to put it through the left side of my tension disc. There's a little metal thing there where you can put thread on one side or the other. And then whenever I get down here, I also have a little shaft to put one on the left side of my needle. I don't know if that's very clear. Let me turn my light on. And then I can put another thread through on the right side um, where the needle hooks in. And I'm gonna go ahead and thread this one. And then I'm gonna grab my right thread and also put it through on the right side of my tension disc. And of course, once you have it all threaded, you'll wanna sew on some scraps just to make sure, um, try and imitate exactly what it's gonna be like when you sew. I have my tension up is pretty almost as high as it'll go. My machine goes up to a nine and I have mine at about an 8.5. And then I'm gonna set my stitch length at 3.5. And we are ready to go. So um, look at all those clips. I think that's one of the things that really can make your binding stand out <laughs> in a good way is using lots of clips. I'm gonna turn my shirt inside out. And I'm gonna start on one of my underarm seams. I have a walking fit on my machine and it really helps when sewing knits. It helps that they feed evenly. I'll let you get a little closer. Let's see if that shows up well for you. Since this binding is cut um, a little wider, you have a little extra wiggle room for when it folds over. If you don't like that, then you can cut it um, not as wide. I did that on the Lacy Slope. Um, on the video that I did for the Lacy Slope, I cut it at 1.25. Um, but that makes it a very narrow, like you are just covering that seam. So you really have to pay attention. Um, this gives you a little bit more wiggle room um, when it's cut wider like this. But it also means that sometimes that your um, width will vary a little bit um, since you do have more wiggle room. I just wanted to show you that I do um, backstitch on a twin needle. I always used to wonder that for some reason, whether or not, and I even read on Google that you're not supposed to, but um, when I didn't, then my seams would unravel. So um, I definitely recommend backstitching. I wanted to show you, I finished this armhole and I wanted to show you, if I can get it on camera, what it looks like when it's finished. And it's just a nice clean, um, Inside, let's see. Do you see the nice zigzag on the inside? And then on the right side, it looks like that. So we're gonna do that on our neckline and then we're gonna do it on our other armhole. Okay, you are finished with your binding. All that's left on your top is to give it a nice press and when you're pressing it, go ahead and turn your hem under and hem it. I'm gonna do the same thing that I just did in applying the binding using my twin needle um, and then you're finished. Thank you for joining me.